Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us to fear Him, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have God consciousness. And the spirit of taqwa is adab. The spirit of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is adab. And this is the da'bu salihin wal anbiya. It is the practice of the prophets and the righteous. Right? The thing that signifies or makes the prophets special to the salihin, one of them is their adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no beauty in one's heart without adab of Allah, without respect of Allah. There was once two scholars arguing with each other and the other one said, you are truly an alim, you're a scholar, but your knowledge has not taught you adab. Right? Adab is something which is outside of knowledge. And Ruwaym ibn Ahmad al-Baghdadi, he advised his son by saying, Ij'al Ya Bunay Ij'al Amalaka Milha wa Adabaka Daqiqa. Make your actions, your nawafal adab, uh, salt, and your adab, the grain. The majority of what you do, let it be adab. And let your extra actions be the salt to that adab. Right? And adab is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed his servants with to be able to reach the highest level of slavehood with him. To the point that when Allah addressed the shaitan, he said, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My servants are such that you have no control, no power over them. Right? But this is not every servant. This is not every person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. These are those who have truly realized adab with Allah, a true servanthood and slavehood with Allah. And the quality of the servant is that he obeys his master. The quality of the servant is that he has adab with his master. Right? He obeys him and he avoids what's been prohibited. That's the foundation of being a servant, a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is our greatest quality. The greatest quality all of us have is that we're servants and slaves to Allah. That He is our master. And that our relationship with Allah is not a relationship of equality. It's not a relationship of equality. Right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent the Qur'an to the Prophet ﷺ. It was his message. And the Prophet said, I was only sent to complete noble character. So the spirit, the entire message of the Quran is adab with Allah. How to have adab with Allah. And this is in our words, it's in our actions, and it's, our, it's in our spiritual states. Adab is that in, which, in whatever position Allah places you in, you never break adab. You never do anything that displeases Him, whether it be words, actions, or a physical uh, you know, in, intention or feeling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But there is tremendous caution on the words. Right? They said that the tongue is the interpreter of the heart. Right? And especially in these, in these trying times. I've heard, unfortunately, people say, Allah doesn't love the people of Palestine. Right? How dare you? Right? That is not what a servant says about his master. That's not the adab that a slave has with his master. Right? The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith with Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he asked the Prophet, the Prophet, after the Prophet told him, right, Kuffa alayka hadha. He grabbed his tongue and said, Control your tongue. And he said, Will we be taken to account for what our, our, our tongues, what we say? And he said, Thakilatka ummuk. Which in a nice translation is, Be quiet. Watch your mouth. He said, Will people be thrown on their faces 
or on their noses into, into hellfire only by right, the harvest of their tongues, only by what their tongues said about Allah, about His Messenger, right? And it's in these trying times that we have to be extremely careful about our adab with Allah. There was once a woman, she was bereaving one of, uh, you know, a deceased one, and the Prophet passed by her and he said, be patient, right? Look to Allah, right, for her, for his or her reward. And she said, go away from me. Get away from me. And the Prophet walked away and someone came up to her afterwards and said, don't you know that was the Messenger of Allah? And immediately she felt regret and she rushed to the Prophet وسلم, and said, O Messenger of Allah, I didn't know that was you. He said, Patience is, on the, is at the first blow. Patience is when it's very difficult. Patience is when you've lost everything. Adab only counts when, you, when, when it's difficult. Right? The adab that really matters is when it's difficult to have adab. When, it's, when you're being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the real test. It's not the test when, when your life is going great and everything is nice. Right? And now you have adab, now you pray well. Right? The adab is when He makes your life difficult to test you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an has sent perfect examples. And these are what the stories of the Qur'an teach us. We have different archetypes of prophets different personalities, different circumstances, different people, different challenges. And the, the Qur'an is showing us that these are different ways to approach difficulty and have Allah be pleased with you. These are different guidelines to dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how did the prophets have adab with Allah? The Prophet وسلم, he said, وَالْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ فِي يَدَيْكَ وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ all good is in your hands, right? And وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ لَيْكَ An evil has, is not, is, has no connection to you, right? There is nothing, you have nothing to do with evil. When Ibrahim, he said, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ When I get sick, he's the one who cures me. Even though we know that Allah is the one who creates sickness and, 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 and wellness, right? When Ayyub was afflicted with his disease, he said, Right? Indeed, here I am afflicted by pain, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. Right? You weren't the one who afflicted me with pain. Right? You are pure, you are pure mercy. You are pure favor. Right? That's the relationship of the prophets with their Lord. And Allah talks about Ayyub, He says, Inna wajadnahu sabira ni'mal abd. <laughs> SubhanAllah. He said, We found him to be patient. What a wonderful slave. What a wonderful servant, SubhanAllah. And a perfect example of patience and adab with Allah is Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail when he has the dream that he's slaughtering his own son. And he doesn't question Allah. He immediately rushes to his son and tells him what he saw. And his son is a young child. He doesn't say, why would your Lord tell you to do such a thing? Right? How could you slaughter me? I'm your son. He says, Ya abati fa'alma tu'mar. Oh father, do as you've been commanded. Right? You will find me, insha'Allah. He even, he even removes patience, ascribing patience to himself. He says, you will find me if God wills of the patient. Right? And Allah describes Ismail, He says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَاعِيلِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ Right? SubhanAllah. He says, remember in the book, Ismail, indeed he was true to the promise. Right? He was true in his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom. We have to submit to His favor. Right? Allah, when He describes the angels, He says, لا يسبقونه بالقول وهم بأمره يعملون. Right? They never challenge Allah's decree. Right? Their ideas never come before Allah's ideas. Their opinions don't come before Allah's opinions. Right? They submit to whatever situation Allah has placed them in. 
right? We have to realize that Allah is more merciful to us than ourselves. Allah loves us more than we love ourselves, right? How many times have we failed in our, in our, in our oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we blatantly disregarded His favor and disobeyed Him and stayed in a state of complete heedlessness and He never turned away? He continued to bless you. You continued to wake up the next morning. You continued to breathe. You continued to work. You continued to eat, right? None of those blessings you deserve. Imam Shatili radiallahu anhu, he says, Oh Allah, if you were to punish me with the, with the worst punishment, with your most painful punishment, I deserve it. I truly deserve it for what I've done. مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ No one has given Allah his true right, his true due. No one has, right? But he's continued to shower us with his tremendous favor. Right? So no matter what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what situation He puts us in, we have to have adab with Him. Right? Allah is Lul Jalali Wal Ikram. He has sifat, attributes of mercy, of, jam, of Jamal and Jalal, of beauty and majesty. We can't only interact with Allah and turn to Allah when He is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Ar Razak, the compassionate one, the one who is providing for us. Right? And then as soon as he is Al-Adl, the just, Al-Hakim, the wise, right? Isa alayhi salam, what does he say? He says, If you punish them, if you punish them, they're your slaves. You do whatever you want. And if you forgive them, then truly you're the you're the you know the most uh, noble and uh, and wise. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who have adab with Him right? and who never do anything which displeases Him in any of our situations. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ali wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin fa ya fawz al-mustaghfir wa astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Khatim al-Nabeel wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us and He shows us how the Muslims are supposed to be in difficulty. He says, أَلَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ When the hypocrite said, the people have gathered against you to the Muslims. The enemies of, of Allah have gathered against you. You're outnumbered, so fear them. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ But instead, but instead, their, their faith and belief in Allah merely increased. And they said, sufficient is Allah for us and the best disposer of our affairs. The Muslims, no matter what situation Allah puts them in, the Muslims are never intimidated. The Muslims never lose hope, right? Because Allah is our guardian. Allah is the one for us, right? So know Allah. Know Allah, right? Know who, who, who He is and how much favor and blessing He showered on us our entire lives. No matter where Allah SWT puts us in, he will, He's always there for us, right? So, uh, SubhanAllah, you know, it, it's very important that we cultivate adab with Allah and then in every other action in our daily life. This is how we cultivate adab, is by showing adab to what He's commanded to uh, uh, us to do. ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ You want taqwa? Those who, ex you know, honor and exalt the symbols of Allah. What are the symbols of Allah? The five prayers. Will do. Right? Being kind. Right? Speaking, you know, reading the Quran. Right? So these acts of worship that He's placed in our life, the more we have adab with them 
And the more we exalt them, the more we're actually exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that, with everyone else, with our parents and our family members and our spouses and our children. Whoever doesn't thank people doesn't thank Allah. Right? So cultivate adab with Allah and then adab with His creation. Because His creation is only special because they're Allah's creation, because they're ascribed to Allah. Right? The only even existence we have is because of Allah. Right? He is, you know, He's given us the mercy, the, in the blessings of Ijad and Imdad, of creation and sustaining. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who have adab with Allah, to never say anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or lacks adab with Him. Allahumma ighfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat ala ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Rabbana taqabbil minna innaka anta islamiyul alim wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawab rahim. Allahumma farrij anil muslimin. Allahumma farrij anil muslimina fi Gaza wa fi Palestine wa fi Palestine wa fi Burma wa fi al Hind wa fi kulli makan ya arhamar rahimin. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'il al qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيموا الصلاة